what's up divas and divos it's your girl so today's video of course you guys already know what time it is it is real talk wednesday i do know that i do look a little bit different today <sighs> got me on some nice new glasses new specs um and also got a new backdrop so you guys if you're interested in the backdrops you can definitely pick them up from rosegal.com that's where i get a majority of all of them also gamis has them you know they're all sister sites so just check out rosegal and look under wall decor home and the wall decor and they're called tapestry so they're fairly inexpensive for this size uh 59 inches by 59 inches is about 10 12 dollars but they're really really nice tapestries because I like them a lot because you can just fold them up and put them away but I just put mines on a clothing rack and I just leave them there and they hang there so I will definitely do a video if you guys are interested in how I do my um, backdrops in case you're doing YouTube videos and you're interested in it so I'll definitely let you guys see that but yes I'm wearing some specs today um, these are from the company called MBMT and they have absolutely have, they have some nice stuff like nice glasses and watches for men and women that is majority of what they sell um so they did send me a watch and a pair of glasses I got to choose so I do like these these are the women's glasses and I did choose a man's watch which I sent to my significant other and um and more or less for a Valentine's Day gift. And it was a really nice watch that he picked out. So, you know, for my hubby. And I already sent that to him. So, they do have some really nice specs. I think these were like 80 bucks or something. But this is just like the outside case. But the inside case is really nice because it just is like it's this magnetic case. It does come with one of these little wipe things for your glasses. But it's really super cute. Um, I like the case a lot because it's magnetic. It's very sleek. Really nice. So I do have a Valentine's Day video on that that I will post up soon. I have to post up a lot of shit, okay? Like, I have to post up a lot of shit. But let me tell y'all, you, you ever, like, if you see me looking around like this, it's not because I'm not paying attention. It's because I misplaced something and I really cannot find it. Like, seriously, I misplaced something and... I can't find it. Um, I did my daughter's wig, um, Tati's wig. If you guys have not seen that video with me and Tati, please check it out. It is a, um, I turned my daughter into me. She's got on a wig. I glued and taped her wig down. And it looks so nice. But now I'm trying to figure out where the damn glue and the tape and the skin barrier is at. Like, I had it all in a baggie. And for the life of me, now I cannot find it, okay? So if I cannot find all of it, that's like $50 worth of stuff that I have to replace because the glue is 10 Excuse me, the glue is 20 The tape is 10 And the barrier um, thing is another 10 So that's 40 plus the, the, the lace whatever thing. That's another 10 So that's 50 bucks, right? Yeah. And I'm trying to find out, you know, I've, I've, I went through my freaking recycling garbage because I thought I might do it in there with the box. Can't find it. And I'm really pissed off because I hate to replace something. And I really don't feel like spending any money, especially because I just spent $2,581, okay, on my teeth. So let me tell y'all, y'all know that I have been going back and forth with my teeth and how I've been going through a lot of bullshit with my teeth. I had to get my two front teeth replaced because, you know, I had to get a root canal. And then I had to get crowns over. So that's why I got my front teeth done over. Um, and then I have just been getting fillings. And I have just been getting all kind of extractions and stuff like that. Well, the dentist that I was going to, you know, he's the one that did my work. And I have not even had these fillings in my mouth for a year. March will actually make a year. And I paid him um, $981 for four fillings. Let's round that shit up to 1000 bucks. So I paid him $1,000 to do these four fillings. Here, well, he the the two um the front tooth and the two teeth that was right next to the front tooth and then the tooth over here. So they all was in the front. And let me tell you guys real quick. The reason why I got the root canal here is because after I got the filling, two weeks later, my teeth were so sore. Like as soon as you touch it, just touch it, it would hurt, and it would just like hurt. Then I had got a bump on the top of the roof of my mouth, kind of found out it was an abscess. I went to the dentist, and I had trauma to my tooth from the filling. So I had to get a root canal. That was a um, $1,000 to get a root canal, and I had to pay for my crowns. Okay, that was another, like, $1,800. 
Now, the filling over here that he did was a surface filling. So it was on the outside. I've had to go back twice to get it fixed and it came back off again and I'm not even bothering with him. I had to get a filling here and here. Well, the other day I was eating and one of the fillings came out of this tooth, the canine tooth. Big chunk, I had a big ass hole in the back of my tooth that I had to fill with putty, um, this teeth putty, until I went to my new dentist today. Let me tell you guys, first of all, I had to get two root canals today on the two teeth that this so-called old dentist that I was going to freaking did. Now the reason why I started going somewhere else is because, I to, I'm not sure if you guys remember, but a couple months ago I told you I was about to get a root canal in the back from my old dentist. And I got this phone call. It was an automated phone call. And it was like, if you have, if you need a dentist and blah, 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 affordable dentist. And I wasn't going to call. I was going to disconnect the call, but I didn't. Good thing I didn't. I, I let the call go through and I spoke to somebody and they directed me to that dentist. And this is the program. So it's basically if it's called, they're called unlimited, unlimited dentistry, unlimited dentistry. And how this works is like this. You don't have to be on no financial aid. You don't have to have no insurance or whatever. It's good for people who don't have insurance. Um, so my entire dental work would have been close to $18,000 at this other place. Um, because I needed 12 crowns or eight in a bridge or uh, some bridge, some crowns. I need like eight or 12 crowns, partials, extractions, fill-ins, root canals, all that good stuff. So, I, um... You go to this place called Unlimited Dentistry and you get half off of the prices. Okay, so my bill is only $8,800. So I had to give them a down payment of $4,400 if I wanted plan, plan A, which consisted of 12 crowns in my teeth, like the, in my mouth, and um, like a bridge. So they, they would build a bridge where my empty teeth was. Or I could pay $5,000 and $5,000, a little bit over $5,000. If I want only eight crowns and some partials, like, you know, I'd have a, a thing in my mouth where I put it in the back and it has two teeth on each side. So I went with that one because I just really didn't want to give up $4,400 today. So I went with that one. Now, the way it works is you, you're a part of the dentistry, not part of it. Like, oh, hey, we're going to be cool. I'm going to be working here. No, you just have to, you have to pay like a membership. I guess that's the best way that I can explain it to you. So I had to give them $150 to be part of the membership. You can still go to dentistry if you don't want to give them $150 for the membership. However, if you don't do that, you're going to be paying full price. So I gave the $150 for the membership because who the hell wouldn't? And it lasts me for as long as I'm a patient. I don't have to renew it or anything like that. It just stays, you know whatever. I'm, I don't have to renew it. So I went today because I had to go get a root canal. Anyway, I ended up getting two root canals. Let me tell you, my new dentist, he's so cool. I had to shout him out on Instagram. He's super cool. He's younger and he's just like upbeat and he's like this wonderful, amazing attitude in the whole office. I was in there cracking up. The other office, like they cool. They caught a little bit reserved and kind of like on the not bougie side, but they just a little bit more reserved. And the dentist, I, you guys recall last year when I spoke of him, he didn't really have the, the best side, the best bedside manner. And he still really doesn't. He's kind of like no filter, but sometimes you got to like sugarcoat shit a little bit for your patients. He's not like that. He's just kind of on a kind of like rough side. He's very, um, he's not, he doesn't conversate with you. He just does what he does and he leaves the room. That's like very unfriendly to me. But anyway, cool, whatever. Just fix my teeth right. Well, he didn't even do that because all of the fillings that he's done for me, I have to get root canals on all of them. The new dentist, Miss Dr. Ben Cooperman, informed me and he let me see it on the x-rays, you know, the x-rays, all of those fillings because he thought they were old. When I first went to see him, he said, "When? how long ago did you get these fillings? They need, they, they need to be replaced. I was like, I didn't even get them a year ago. Okay. So anyway, today he shows me them as I'm getting my root canal, two root canals, and those feelings were so bad that the reason why they're falling out is because he didn't even put them in right and they're all close to the nerves. So that's why I have to get all these root canals, okay? Which sucks. So now I've had two root canals today and on the 6th of March, I go back to get my teeth shaved down so I can get my crowns here. So I have two crowns here and two crowns here. So all the teeth right here in the front will be like new teeth. However, my mouth is so fucking numb right now on this side, 
that I keep biting my lip inside and I don't even know it. Like I keep feeling meat. So I'm pretty sure when this shit wears off that I'm going to be so fucked up in the mouth right here because I keep biting my fucking lip. So I'm, I'm really pissed off about that. And plus I'm pissed off that I cannot find my super tape, my Aquabon glue, my motherfucking um, skin barrier shit. Like That's the reason why I don't want to buy. I don't want to spend no more money because I just spent the fucking money. And I really don't want to spend no more money. But we're just going to get past all of that. I'm going to be cool about it. I was really going to come home and do a video. I don't know what it was about, but I knew I was going to do a video today um, besides this. And by, by the way I feel right now, listen, the only thing I want to do is rip my lips off. Or, or just take my lips, this one side, and just lift it up. Just like this. So that way I can stop fucking biting on the inside of it. I'm telling you guys... It, I can't eat. I have tried to eat yogurt, and I've I've eaten the PC. I've eaten the yogurt, and I've had a sandwich, but um, I keep eating my mouth. Like, so that's the reason why I got my glasses on. I I did at least put my eyebrows on for you guys. I got my head wrap on. I probably wore this shirt like two times in the real talk already, but let me tell y'all, bitches, this motherfucking clean. Okay, so get the fuck over it. Um. And yeah, I, I was going to do a video on some jewelry that I had got, but you know what? It'll be tomorrow because when my lips come back to normal, you know what I'm saying? I won't be sitting up there going all like this on a video looking like a goddamn crackhead. So, mm-hmm. Um, now I have been, I, I've, I've lost two more pounds. So, you know, the last time that I spoke to you guys, I think I was like 193, 192 because I had went up. Now I'm back to 190. And so... The one thing that I'm really not liking too much about the weight loss is this. My panties don't fit no more. Okay? Like, I know y'all bitches is like, what, girl? My motherfucking drawers don't fit. Like, I kind of, I had to, I have some that fit, but the ones that I really, really like, they too small. They falling off. Who motherfucking panties fall off? That means that my ass is smaller. And my hips too, but I mean, like. I really didn't want my butt to get smaller. And on top of that, you know, I, I, I was doing these, I've been doing squats for like two and a half, three months now. Could y'all please bitches tell me why the fuck I've been doing these squats wrong? So like, you know, I do the squats and shit and it never hurt my legs, never hurt my legs, nothing like that. You know, I was like, oh shit, April getting it in, April getting it in. He said, this ain't shit. But I didn't see my booty getting plump or nothing. Like, I'm like, when is this going to take effect? Like, you know what I'm saying? When, when, is, when is it going to get rounded? Because I'm losing it now. And I'm going to need it to get a little bit higher up and round it because I am losing some of my booty. Um, yeah, I was, I, I was doing the wrong squats. I was doing them all wrong. And I'm not too happy about that. But for the past week now, I have... Um, I have been doing them correctly. And my fucking legs, let me tell y'all bitches. They are sore. They are. So, I have to answer custom, customized, customized. Um... So I've seen, I, I, I'm thinking I'm seeing a little bit of effort there on the booty side. I don't know. But, you know, when you lose weight, it sucks that you lose, like, what you really do like. And which, you lose what you really don't want to lose, which is my ass. And I feel like my titties are um, a little bit smaller. Now, what I really wanted to lose was this midsection right here. That shit ain't, that shit is like holding on for dear life. And what sucks about it is so you just couldn't go to the back, like take this and go to the back. I'm like, you know what? I think I'm about to give me a fat transfer. I'm going to suck all the fat out in this right here and put it all right here and right in the back area. Okay. So that way I still got a part of me. Okay. And I still feel plump because let me tell y'all, I really my bras even feel like they um they getting a little bit too big and i was really happy with my boobs okay like seriously i no tmi tmi but they was nice and full looking okay and they didn't look all flabby now nobody don't want to walk around with flabby ass boobs okay 
especially when you're taking your motherfucking bra off and you're trying to look good for your man. He want to rub on him. He don't want to lift the shits up. Like, no, we don't. I don't want you to have to do that. So I'm feeling some type of way about things, you know what I mean? About myself and my weight loss. And I tell you what, I'm happy that I lost weight, but I'm not happy about all the other things that I'm losing with it, which sucks. I'm losing my ass, my titties, and my goddamn teeth, okay? So I feel like I'm going through it. And now all my favorite leggings, you know, my favorite leggings from Target. Well, they are size large. The extra larges are too big now because I constantly am pulling those up and I'm constantly biting them in my fucking mouth. But the larges are even too big now. Okay, so I have one up here today. They're the different ones. They are, they have like the little straps at the, um, around the legs like that. Well, I have those ones on. They're large. I'm finding myself pulling them up as well. And I don't really want to be that small. If, if I can be that small, I would really like to be that small with the fat booty or a nice size booty. Okay. And I tell you, losing weight is hard. Um, I was kind of bummed out that I was doing the squats entirely wrong. So I felt like, was I wasting my time on doing this exercise? Um, and I also feel kind of like bummed out about it also is because my stomach is still like, not, not as big as it was, but it's somewhat like, you know, it's not to where I want it to be. And then, you know, like I could see the difference in my face, but also when I feel like when I turn to the side, I still see this, you know, like, where is this going? Where, when is it going? Like, do I need to get like some type of neck surgery? Because I'm just like not, where is it going? I am happy about the fact that I have a neck. Because you guys know that I have been complaining. Like when I, when, when I gain weight, I don't have no neck. I know I don't. I don't. I don't. I already have a short neck as it is. You know what's so sucky about it in general? We always are so hard on ourselves in general. Like we always, we are the worst critics of ourselves. We always judge ourselves. We are the worst critics. And that sucks, okay? Because I try to be so happy with myself. And I really am. However, sometimes I'm not, okay? Because I can find a little imperfection to me that may seem like something really tiny to you guys, may seem like something really, really huge, humongous to me. So we are our worst critics. And I try to just like overlook the, like, the vanity shit and just be happy and be like, oh, okay, great, April, you woke up today and that's great. So you should be happy about that. And I try to convince myself that, yeah, this is true. However, then I sometimes snap back to reality and I look at myself and I'm like, God damn, I need um, some lipo. I need an ass. I need my titties to be lifted and I need my eyes to be done. Like, you know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't really understand what I'm going through right now. I don't know if it's, um, I'm, because I'm middle aged, or am I middle aged? I'm, I don't know what you call it. No, because I'm 43. But um, I just get paranoid about a lot of things in general. You know, like the, the main thing that I'm paranoid the most about is my fucking teeth. Okay, I'm very paranoid about that to the point where I'm I have dreams about losing my teeth. Okay, I had a dream a few days ago that I lost one of my crowns, and it broke off and I was digging through the garbage looking for it because it broke off on a piece of food. So, and I didn't realize it until after I had, you know, through the gar garbage out that my tooth was missing. So I get very paranoid about my teeth and because I think about them all the time. And it's the worst thing in the world to not have teeth, but you know, I don't mind not having a few. It's, if I'm missing teeth, they need to be in the fucking back where you can't see, not in the front, you know what I'm saying? So. I'm very paranoid about the little bit that I do have in the front. Um, so I, you know, I kind of dream up these, I, I kind of, I dream up this, these bad nightmares to existence. And I'm very paranoid about that. And I'm also very paranoid about gaining weight back. Okay. So a lot of things that I go through, I don't even, I just don't even discuss with people. I just keep it to myself because I try to feel like, um, I just try not to worry about it. You know what I'm saying? I try not to worry about it. And I just feel like, you know what, April, you're just, you're being paranoid again. And it's not that bad. This It's not that bad. But I'm pretty sure I'm not the only person that goes through shit like that in general. 
you know, I, I get paranoid about a lot of things. Um, I get paranoid about money. I always think that I never have enough money. And I think when you have children and you, you know what I'm saying, you, you probably feel that way in general. Like I'm constantly saving stuff, I, I, money, or I just always trying to make money. Like, you know what I'm saying? So I'm probably not the only one that feels like that. I'm paranoid. Like I said about my teeth, I'm paranoid about my weight. I'm very paranoid also about my hair. Um, only because I'm just like, my edges are getting super duper thin and I just keep losing my hair more and more. So I'm very paranoid about that. Um, so it's money, weight, teeth, hair, um, and my eyes, my eyelids. Um, because um, I am I have very hooded eyelids. So, and I, I think it's hereditary because my mom's eyelids are like this. And as I just notice her as she's older, you know, her eyelids are very hooded and she, she doesn't have any lashes anymore. And so I don't have any lashes, but anymore due to my own circumstances, my own fault. And that's because wearing any fucking individuals and strips all these years, they have taken my lashes away. I used to have really nice lashes, but anyway, so I get very paranoid about that those things and it sucks because um majority of those things that i said are vanity things but you know i'm pretty sure i'm not the only one um but and i get paranoid about my love life with my husband like it's gonna work out but other than that like i don't really discuss these things with people because you know um i just try to not think about it and i guess sometimes when you don't think about things it doesn't make it any better you know what i'm saying like just because i don't talk about it or i don't think about it I'm really still thinking about it in the back of my head and I'm trying to just avoid the whole just thing of me being fucking paranoid about shit. And, you know, or I'm trying to convince myself that it's not that bad. And I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one that does this. But at least I got some of it off my chest with you guys. I don't even know why I'm rambling on like this, but this is just how I feel about myself in general. You know, I, I always say to you guys, well... I don't care what anybody thinks, blah, blah, blah. But in reality, it's not that I don't care what anybody else thinks. I don't really care what everybody else thinks, and then I do. You know what I'm saying? But I want to feel good, and I want to look good for myself. Somebody may say, April, your eyelids are not that bad, or your weight is not that bad, or your teeth are not that bad. Okay? And in my, my mind, I'm like, oh, you're just saying that because... And I'm just feeling like this they are. So I guess, you know, like I said, I don't really care what people think of me or how I look. It's just how I feel. And I get really kind of, not depressed, but it stresses me out sometimes that I feel so paranoid about shit, you know? But anyway, so we're going to get into this real talk because I'm just like rambling on. And you guys know the drill, the drill, the dealio about real talk. If you have a real talk about that you want to discuss with me. I probably won't have no lip by the by the time next week comes. You can always send me an email to my is my lovers2012 at gmail.com. Please put in the subject line real talk. If you want to change the names of the characters in your email, you can do so by letting me know by just saying, hey April, I've already changed the names of the people. And other than that, we're gonna get into this real talk. All right, guys? Let's do this. Okay, you guys. Hi, April. I have to warn you that this is going to be a long one. This is not actually my first time emailing you a real talk. If you remember, I was Paris, who had the drunk and a drug addicted mother who basically took my kids away from me by spreading lies about my then husband saying that he was inappropriate with my twin teenage daughters. Well, that was a few years ago and I'm happy to say that I have since gotten my kids back, but only after leaving my husband of 11 years, which had nothing to do with the case, but just that we had grown apart under the, under the stress of everything that we were going through. Mm. Girl, I need your help again. My husband and I have been separated for about three years and divorced for one. I started dating a man that pursued me heavily, even though I was still kind of heartbroken over the way my marriage had ended. I knew his sister for years, who was a co-worker at one time. So he saw that we were friends on Facebook and immediately she hit me up telling me that her brother was interested in me. We can call him Evan. 
At the time, he was very upfront with me about being married, but separated just as I was. He also had kids with his soon-to-be ex-wife. I didn't sweat it because I was in the same position. Well, Evan was very persistent and asked to take, to take me on a date for my birthday, since my birthday had been the week before. I let him take me out, and he took me to a very expensive restaurant and basically spoiled me rotten on our first date. I am a working makeup artist, so I love makeup. So I basically got to have whatever I wanted from both Sephora and Mac that day. He was a real gentleman and I honestly wasn't sure I would find anything like him and honestly was preparing to be by myself. We continued to date and it was basically a fairy tale love story. Six months in, he met my children and they absolutely loved him. He started spending a lot of time with both me and my children. One of the issues that I had with my ex-husband was that he never supported my dream of being an esthetician. I, I can never say this. Esthetician. Esth oh God. Esthetician. And makeup artist. You guys know what I'm talking about. Okay. When I wanted to go back to school, he told me no. My husband told me no. That he wouldn't support me because I already had a good factory job which I had already gotten hurt at prior. I was so nervous about the financial burden I would have in going back to school with being a single mother and no help from my ex with my children. But when I tell you this man stepped up, Evan stepped up. He encouraged me to enroll and he paid all my tuition and helped with bills while I went to school. You may be wondering what the problem is. Soon after I finished school, he became very distant, and I could tell something was wrong. Also, I had been asking him, when could I meet his children? Well, he tells me that his wife doesn't like the fact that we are dating and is threatening to take his kids from him unless he stops seeing me. I was pissed, but was telling him that he has rights as a father, and she cannot do this. He was so scared because he is a great father and his kids mean the world to him. He asked me to give him some time to work things out or come up with some type of solution, which I did even, um, which I did even though, I, excuse me. He asked me to give him some time to work things out or come up with, a, with some type of solution, which I did. Even though I was hurt, I was still in love with him and I gave him time. Fast forward three months. We still talk a few times a week until I stopped hearing from him altogether. No more good morning, beautiful texts, or anything. I called him repeatedly for a week until he finally answered. He tells me that his kids are all of a sudden living with him full time now. I am happy for him. I'm happy thinking we can continue and get back to our relationship. But he tells me that he feels <clears throat> he tells me that he feels like it's not fair to me for us to be in a relationship because he has no time for me right now being a full-time father. I'm hurt, but I understand, but also let him know that his problems are my problems when we are in a relationship and that I just want to be there for him and get to know his kids like he has gotten to know mine. I now have to deal with my kids and family asking questions about why they don't see Evan anymore. I'm one not to tell family everything, so I just tell my kids and family he is really busy, which he is. I don't know what to do. Should I move on or wait? I was dating a little bit, but seemed to not find anyone worth my time or energy. It's so hard because I love this man. I love Evan with everything in me, and it makes it even harder when neither him or me were the problem but outside, inter but outside interferences. I talk to him every day, and he is such a great man and does so much to take care of his kids. And I know for a fact that he isn't seeing anyone just working and taking care of his kids. He is so nervous about me meeting his kids, which is the only reason I'm upset with him because he has met mine a long time ago. It makes me feel like I'm not good enough. Thanks in advance for your advice. You didn't fail me before, so I'm sure you will be real. Thanks and, can't, and take care, Paris. I'm sorry, guys, if you see me keep moving my lip, but it is really bothering me. And I keep biting on the inside of my lip. So, Paris sent me some pictures of her and Evan, and they look so cute together. They make a nice couple. 
and I do remember you, okay? Because when I, I can always put a face to, um, you know, an email. And she's so pretty at the hookah lounge. <laughs> they are so cute together. And you know what? So, I think that's at the hookah lounge. Looks like the hookah lounge. Well, not hookah lounge, but hookah. You know, it really sucks, you know, and it's it's sad that, you know, you find somebody that you really do like and you care for. You got you, you're getting in a groove of things. You're getting into getting to know each other real good. And, and you finally find a man that's worthy and he's supportive to you and he takes care of you and he loves your family. And then you have somebody that's on the outside that's just not happy. And, you know, um, they're just not happy with themselves you, you you feel me like i don't know how to explain like you, you you guys get what i'm saying like here this girl is paris you know she's in love and and, and, it, and it and it's and it, it's it does it sucks for her and it doesn't suck you know because she was already in a relationship for a while she was married to this man for 11 years and they divorced and you know separated and that sucks because when you find somebody that you really care for, you want to make it work. You want to make it last. But not only that, she's went through things. She's went through things with her children, her mother taking her kids away and she's gotten her children back. And then when she had to go through that, she had to separate from her husband because they just weren't in it together anymore. Meaning they weren't in love. They, they, they've been through so much. They've been so stressful that, you know what I mean? They just weren't interested anymore. And that, that kind of like sucks. You, you know what I'm saying? And now she's met this man. Evan, who she she kind of felt like, you know what, I'm just going to just be alone. I honestly felt like I was I'm just going to be alone. And I could I could totally dig where she's coming from because I too felt that way. Like, you know, I I dated for a minute and then I got in a relationship and it wasn't even a relationship like that. I started to say I dated him too. And I just wasn't feeling him at all. Like after a couple of weeks, I just wasn't feeling him at all. And I just felt like, you know what, April, after that, you know, I had been alone for a while and I felt like, you know what, I'm just going to be alone. I'm not going to, I'm not going to worry myself over a man because I'm not going to stress myself out about it. If it's meant to, for me to be with somebody, I'm going to be with somebody. However, I felt the same way. Like nobody was worthy of my time. Nobody was worthy of my love except for one person, which is my husband. And by the grace of God, you know, we are back together. But I understand how she feels because when you love somebody, it's hard when somebody on the outside interferes with your shit. And it's like, it makes it just cut. It's not, you're, it's like out of your control, but it is kind of in your control. And it sucks that this man has to like, be in fear of his children being taken away because of his his wife or his soon-to-be ex-wife who he's separated from you know and here it is paris has found herself someone like come on man they haven't even been together a long time and he freaking paid her whole entire tuition for school like who does that people been married for years and a husband don't pay their entire tuition or you know he's helped her pay her bills as well like she found herself a good man, not just because he paid for shit, but because he's a gentleman. You know, so he opened doors for her. He meets her family. He spends time with them. He supports her when she does. And sometimes finding support from anybody is hard in general. So it sucks that now they're, they've kind of grown a distance and she don't want to give up on this relationship. And I understand people, you know, you got to make time for yourselves. Being a full-time parent is a hard job. Yes, it is because we have to we have to take care of our kids. That's a full-time job anyway. Being a parent don't never stop, okay? However, we have to learn how to take time for ourselves. Now, I have five kids. Now, they're not all little anymore. They're grown, but you have to take time for yourselves. Now, Evan's excuse to Paris is, you know, it wouldn't be fair to her because now he's a full-time father. And just because you take care of your kids, just because your children live with you and you you have them doesn't mean that you have to stop your life. You know, if that were me, sometimes we, you know what, I'm going to, this is what, this is, this is how I've always been. And sometimes it's hard for people to express themselves verbally over the phone or verbally face to face. And it, sometimes it's a lot easier to write it down. So that way you can give it to the person and they can read it and then they can go back and forth to read it. And it makes it a lot easier to understand. And it, it kind of like opens them up a little bit more and they're a little bit more, you know, receptive to it. Take me, for example, when I was probably like about 
seven and a half months pregnant with, with um, baby number four, me and my husband, we were separated from each other. Okay. We was only separated from each other for about probably like, um, I think we separated when I was like two months. So we probably were separated for like five, six months. Okay. But at the time we worked at the, we worked together, not at the same hours though. I worked during the daytime and he worked at the night and this was a call center, but I was the administrator. This is before I worked for the health insurance company. Um, so I was the administrator. So I was at the front desk. So sometimes he would come in and get his check and I would see him off and on. But, you know, we got to a point where we was arguing so much that we didn't even speak to each other like that. Over time, over, you know, when we first kind of like separated, he, he moved out and he went to live with his mother. Um, in the beginning, I was very depressed and I was hurt about it because here it is. I'm pregnant and you're not here. Okay whatever. Eventually I got over it. You know what I'm saying? And I moved on. When I say moved on, I didn't move on to anybody else. I just moved on with my life. Like, you know, I continued to take care of the kids that I already had. And I just went to my doctor's appointment. I went to work and I did what I had to do. And I would see him from time to time and we might spoke to each other. After a while, I just kind of like, you know, I lost interest. And it wasn't even that I lost interest, but I kind of like stopped fighting because I had kind of felt like I was begging him to come back and crying to him and crying to him and he didn't want to. So after a while, I just left it alone because I had gotten numb and I had gotten over it. And um, i never forget, you know, he would see me and I would just be like, hi, how you doing? And I would just keep it moving. Like if I'm not pregnant by you and I don't even know you, like we weren't even living together. This is how I started treating him. And it wasn't done intentionally. It was just because, you know, I was kind of like over it. I think I had been through more than enough that my depression and my state of mind was cleared. I was okay. I was okay. I, I went through my grieving stage. So I guess he feel like he realized that when I kind of like was over it, I guess I wasn't really paying him any attention anymore. He realized, you know, he tried to call me quite a few times and I just really didn't want to talk to him. You know, I said, I'm fine. I'm great. You know, I got to go. You know, I would, it, I would just make the conversations over the phone very limited, very short as well as in person, because there wasn't really anything to talk about anymore. I'll see you when the baby is born. That's it. I don't really want to talk anymore. So I'll never forget. I was um, about to get ready to go home for the night because it was almost five o'clock and it was like a quarter to five. And like his shift did not start until 530 or six o'clock. By that time, by the time the nighttime shift came in, I was already gone. I had been long gone. Well, he came in. And we had a glass door because we shared a building with other companies. So I seen him get off the elevator right there. He came in with this manila envelope and I still have it to this day. I have the letter that he wrote me to this day. He, read it, he wrote it on a brown napkin. You know the long napkins you pull down? He wrote it on a brown napkin. There's like three of them. And he wrote it. He wrote me a letter. And I read it. He gave it to me. And then he's like, here's for you. Um, and then he walked away and I read it. You know, I read it and then I spoke to him later and we, you know, after reading the letter, I was a little bit more open-minded to him. And I was a little bit more, you know, receptive and I, you know, I was, I was willing to give him the benefit of the doubt. And so, you know, we, we got back together and shit, but I feel like sometimes you have to write the person a letter sometimes. And I know that may sound really old fashioned to a lot of people, but when you tell somebody something verbally over the phone or in person, it's a lot to grasp. You understand what I'm saying? Like, I know when he tells me something, I try to remember every single thing he said in every single tone, just because it meant so much to me. But if I'm able to read it, I can read that shit over and over and over again, and I can make more sense of it, and I can just mentally visualize it. So some people are more willing and open to being able to read something. You know what I mean? And it means it means a little bit more when you're able to read it and see it, okay? And then you can go back and read it and you can go back and read it. And then you know that this person has taken the time out to write this down, you know? And if he's so busy, maybe he's too busy to kind of like grasp what you're saying as a conversation because he may be paying you maybe 50% of the attention while he's paying 50% of the other portion of his attention to his children. So you're not getting the full attention that you would like to get and i think that if you was to write him a letter not a fucking email honey a letter okay a letter a paper and pen letter 
I think that if you were to able to write him a letter and mail it to him, put it in his mailbox, put it in his mailbox. Don't tell him he's getting a letter in the mail. Just mail it to him and he'll read it. And you express yourself. You have to let this man know. You have to let Evan know that I understand that you're a father and I as well am a mother. And I'm a full-time mother, a full-time single mother, as you are a full-time single father. However, as grown-ups, as parents, as human beings, as people, we need to make time for ourselves. Okay, yes, we are going to devote our entire lives to our children. Even when they're grown and they move out, we are still going to devote our entire lives to our children. Okay, whether you guys want to believe it or not, we are. And... We have to devote some of that time to ourselves because if you don't, you're going to go crazy. You know what I'm saying? You have to find time. Now, I'm not sure what age his children are because I don't recall you stating that. But if they are under a certain age, honey, he has a wife, an ex-wife. And I'm pretty sure that she gets the kids on the weekends or every other weekend. So therefore, they do have to share the responsibilities of being parents and also the responsibilities of spending time with the children. So when he has giving those children to his ex-wife, then I think maybe it's time for you and he to spend time with one another. Also, you, you need to let him know that. You have to you have to make time for yourself, but also you cannot allow your ex-wife to control you and the person you are. You cannot allow your ex-wife to control who you see because I'm pretty sure that if it were you, Evan, you wouldn't control who she sees. So you have to instill that in him, but do it in like a more, you know, not professional way, but a very like, um, concerned way, but also as a, in a way that you're letting him know, like, listen, I'm here for you. Like you said, your problems are my problems. You know what I mean? Now I understand how you feel should you, if you, if you really care for this man and you really am in love with him and you really feel strongly about him and you know that you and him can have something really special, then why give up? You know what I'm saying? Like, it's a hard world out there, okay, these days, trying to find true love and a true gentleman and sometimes even a true woman. And when we do find one, you, we have to fight for them. We have to fight. So don't don't let his ex-wife stand in the way of your true happiness with him, okay? But I also would not beg anybody to be with me, okay? Sometimes when they see us and they see that we're like um, more or less being, you know, not pesky, but listen, I love you. Why can't we be together? We can't be together. We can't be together. Yes? Yes, I am. You know, when you're being pesky and being pesky, like, oh, yes, I love you. Yes, I love you. Yes, I love you. You know what I mean? Um, they they find us to be very vulnerable. And sometimes that makes makes the relationship a little little harder. You know, you know, like like I like I used me and my 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 husband, for example, when I was pregnant. You know, when we first separated, I was crying to him, please come home, please, I miss you. I was damn near begging. And I can't, we were going through too many things. And then when I started not paying him any attention and it wasn't done on purpose, but I just was over it. You're not even like over it, but you know, I had, my grief had run its course. That seemed like that's when he wanted to come around. And it seems like they do that. So if you calling him every day, every day, every day, every day, let it be for a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Back off a little bit because you're doing all the chasing right now. And as much as you love this man, you doing all the chasing. Back up a little bit and let him see what he's missing. Because you're not giving him enough time to evaluate the situation and think about it. You know what I'm saying? Write him that letter. You know, write him that letter. And once you mail that letter, don't call him for a while. See if he calls you first, okay? See if he calls you after you get that, after he gets that letter. Now, you you guys are living in the same hometown. So, mail that letter. You know the letter's going to probably take about two days to get to him. You know, let, 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 let time go by and see if he calls you once he reads that letter. Okay. I wouldn't keep calling him over and over and over again because you're not allowing him to come chase you. Sometimes when we show too much attention and we giving them too much of what we got and 
we not allowing them to give it to us back, they're not going to give it to us back. You know what they say? Why buy the cow if you can get the milk for free? That's an old saying. And I'm not saying he's being like that with you, but he's not answering phone calls. He's not um, He's not willing to be in a relationship like that because he feels like it's not fair to you because he's going to be so busy. So he's more or less kind of like wanting you to chase after him. And some men do that just to see if they got it still or if you really do care. Hey, listen, I'm going to be honest with you guys. I do that too. I, I've, I've done that many a times to my, my ex-husband, soon-to-be husband. I've done that to him many a time because it's it's a good feeling to know that somebody cares about you. But on The Real Paris, the first thing that I would do is I would sit down and I would write him a nice lengthy letter and I would put it in the mailbox and mail it off to him, okay? And stop calling him every day. It's hard when you really care about somebody, but sometimes you got to let them go so that they can come back to you. You understand what I'm saying? You don't have to date anybody else. If you feel like they're not worthy of your time, then why bother? Just give this time. Sometimes things got to work its course, you know? Sometimes people got to evaluate shit. And if he really cares about you and it's pissing him off, then trust me, he's going to come back around. He, he'll finally come to his senses and not allow his ex-wife to control him. But you need to also reiterate that in the letter. Like, listen, you have your rights and it's not fair to you. That's what court is for. That's what child support and family court is for. Fuck that bitch. She ain't got, she ain't running shit. Don't let her run your world. Huh? So on that note, you know what I'm saying? Write him a letter. Let him know how you feel. Let him know, you know, got to give himself time. Got to give yourselves time to spend together. That's what it's all about. You know what I'm saying? Everybody's entitled to love and a relationship. However, we don't let nobody control it but ourselves. Don't let nobody else's miserable shit make you too unhappy. Let, let him know that also. Don't let anybody else's miserable life make ours unhappy. Okay? Now, moving on to the next. Hey, Miss April, you can call me Beth. First off, I wanted to say that I love your videos, especially your blonde wigs. To die for, seriously. Hey, Beth. Yes, girl. I love my blonde wigs. Yes, thank you. Anyway, I'm nearly 18, and on New Year's Eve, I found out that I was pregnant. Congratulations, girl. I told my mom, and she was really supportive. However, my boyfriend, who I've been with for three months, has turned psycho. He's extremely jealous of everyone I see, and to begin with, wanted me to have an abortion and said that I can keep thinking I'm having the baby, but I won't be. He said that it should be his choice to get rid of the baby. He's told me who I can and can't have as a friend, said that my baby won't be around any people other than white people, and said that he doesn't want my baby around any gay transgender people. My sister is transgender, and it hurts me that he says this. He's even threatened my male gay friend by saying that if he sees him, he won't know what hit him. He's extremely racist, sexist, and homophobic. He's also, th he's also said that he'll be seeing the baby just as much as me and that he wants to come to every scan and also the birth. I just don't know what to do. He's doing all of this for control of me and the baby, not because he cares or loves me. I want to move out of my mom's house and get my own place once the baby is born. And I really, want, and I really don't want my ex-boyfriend in my life, but I'm scared. I'm scared of what he's going to be like once the baby is here. I don't feel comfortable with him driving off with our child or staying at his home. I'm not with him anymore and I just don't know what to do. He shouted in my mom's face and was very rude to her. He demands to see me and if I say no, he calls me a whore, a slut, and a bitch. I've been thinking I should try and make it work with him because I know what it's like not to have a dad in my life. But at the same time, I know it's wrong. I'm such an open, happy, social person, and he wants to control every aspect of my life. I'm looking forward to having the baby and loving it and giving it the best life I can as a single mom, even though I'm young. What should I do, April? Beth. Did I just crack my neck when I turned my head? Because this bullshit is fucking ridiculous. First of all, Beth is 18. 
Well, she's nearly, or she, she's 18 or she's nearly 18, okay? She's nearly 18. So on New Year, she found out she was pregnant. And, you know, she lives with her mom. She's got a baby daddy. And I guess he's white because he done told her that the baby ain't going to be around nobody but white people, okay? So I guess he's white. Now, I'm not sure about Beth, but if he's prejudiced and racist and homophobic, then I'm pretty sure Beth is white too. Nothing against white folks, but what I am against is fucking racist motherfuckers okay so first of all he treats you like shit he controls you he tells you who you can and can't have as friends he tells you that your baby cannot be around anyone transgender or gay or white okay and let's see the number one kicker he yelled up in your mama face and is rude to your mother first of all sweetheart beth what should you do I would get a restraining order against that little cocky motherfucker, okay? Because what the thing, what the problem is, he picking on a pregnant woman. Now, I can't only imagine what he would do if some fucking body stepped to him like a real man. I can only imagine whether it be a black or white, Chinese, Puerto Rican, whatever color, okay? Whatever race. I can only imagine what he would do if your, um, your baby father, we're going to call him Tommy. I can only imagine what Tommy would do if a real man stepped up to him. He probably would run the other direction because I see coward, coward written all over him, especially for the fact that he went to your mother. He went and got in your mother's face and screamed in your mother's face. That's all signs of disrespect right there. All fucking signs and forms of disrespect. When some, when a man could do that to their girlfriend or wife's mother, he has no respect for anybody not even for himself, not even for his own mother. If he can do that to your mother, he has no respect for his own fucking mother, okay? Now, that's great you having a baby, but I tell you what, I will be taking my little happy pregnant ass right to the court system and getting a restraining order on him because I wouldn't let him anywhere near my child and I wouldn't let him, allow, I would not allow him to tell me who and who I can have as friends. Now, if y'all ain't together, why the fuck is he worried about who you're friends with? Okay, that's number one thing. Number two, he cannot demand to see you. You're not his property, nor are you his motherfucking wife. And even if you were his wife, he still cannot demand to see you. But here's the kicker. I don't know if you got brothers, but if I had one, because if I were you and I had a brother, he would be getting his ass kicked. Tommy would be getting his ass kicked all up and down the block. But I'm not here to promote motherfucking violence. So I'm trying to keep it peaceful and let's do this professionally and try to keep ourselves out of some motherfucking trouble. So that's when we call the motherfucking popo and we go to the courts and we get a restraining order on his bitch ass, okay? Because he ain't bullying nobody what you talking about. If, his, if, if he sees your gay friend, he ain't going to know what hit him. So what's not, what type of punk shit is that? So basically what you're saying, Tommy, is you're going to sneak attack my best friend because you just said he ain't going to know what hit him. That's some real bitch shit right there. Let me tell you something, sweetheart, Beth. You know, you are nearly 18 and life is way too short. I'm not really sure about why you want to try to make things work out with this asshole. However, if you were to try to make things work out with Tommy, all I can picture in my head right now is him beating the shit out of you, okay? on a daily fucking basis, okay? Just beating you, beating you, beating you on a daily fucking basis. Especially because now he feels like he really owns you because you got his child, okay? So now that you got pregnant by him, that's where he's getting really controlling and he feels like he owns you because you pregnant by him, you carrying his seed, like these motherfuckers wanna say, you carrying his little baby, okay? And he feels like, oh, well, you carry my baby. I'm about to control you and this motherfucking baby and your mama if I feel like it. Y'all should have been nipped that in the bud because I had any man that I've ever been with got a step to my mother's face. Let me tell you something. You would not be leaving her face with two fucking legs or any motherfucking lips, okay? Because by the time I finish with you and my mama finish with you, nigga, you gonna wish you did not know us, okay? We gonna nip that shit real quick in the bud but that's the problem you didn't do that you allowed him to yell in your mother's face just as well as your mother allowed him to yell in her face now you talk about you knew what it feels like to grow up without a dad so that's why you should try to make it work with your baby daddy because you know how it is to grow up without a dad I hate to hear people say that, but it's still, yet it's still, you young-minded. You you nearly 18, so you young, so I guess you would say that. Let me tell you something, Beth. 
you don't need to have a father, especially one that's an asshole, that's abusive verbally and mentally to your mother. Do you think it's cool for your child to sit around and watch his or her parents fighting and arguing like cats and motherfucking dogs and her father beating on her mother because her mother just tried to make it work because she wanted a father for her child? What makes that so right? I would rather be a single parent than have my child in a household with two parents that fight like cats and dogs and, and, and just bicker and bicker and bicker. That's not a healthy environment for a child. Not only that, but child protection services will come and take your baby away from you. And it's called child neglect, okay? It's a form of child neglect when you have your child in an environment that is nothing but negativity, violence, verbal, and physical. You will lose your child to the state, honey, okay? It's called child neglect. They will have your ass in court for that. And if you think I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, trust and believe, I do. Because I've already been through this, like, um, hmm, 23, 22 years ago before my husband. So I know what I'm talking about, okay? They didn't take my children, but I still had to go to family court for child neglect because I was in a relationship that was not a good, healthy one, all right? So, yeah. So trust and believe, some things are just left the fuck alone. Yeah, we some of us grow up without fathers in our lives, and that just makes our mothers a lot more stronger. And that allows us to appreciate our mom a lot more, okay? That's what parenting is all about. We don't need both of them. Though it would be really, really nice to have both parents, but sometimes it doesn't work out like that. However, if it were I and my, my baby daddy was an abusive asshole... I'm sorry, but you can kick rocks with no gym shoes or socks on and go about your business. I'm not about to try to sit here and make it work with you because I know what it's growing up like. I know what it's like to grow up and not have a father. Girl, bye. Okay? This is when you're time for you, Beth, to grow the fuck up. Okay? So you're nearly 18, and I love you too. Thank you for watching my videos, but I'm about to give you some real fucking knowledge right now. You think that your baby father, Tommy, has stopped or will stop once you have the baby? No, sweetheart. It's going to get a million times worse. This is just the icing on the cake that he's showing you, okay? He's verbally abusive, and you didn't say he was physically abusive, but I can only imagine if he's stepping to your mama and being disrespectful to your mother, I can only imagine how he's going to react on hit on you when he gets out of hand and he doesn't get what the fuck he wants, okay? He's calling you poor bitch and slut because you don't want to be bothered with him and you don't want to see him. What type of man is that? Why would you even want to make anything fucking work with this fucking asshole, this coward of a man? Okay, it's called it's called growing the fuck up. Okay, and as long as you allow this motherfucker to walk around and think like his shit don't stink, he gonna walk around and act like his shit don't stink. But God forbid he step to the wrong motherfucking nigger or spick or Chinaman, he gonna get his ass kicked. And you know what? He's gonna deserve every last bit of it because he's disrespectful to women. And I see that he's disrespectful to women. He's disrespectful to anybody that's non-white. Okay. That's, that's not white. And I'm sorry, but I just really don't like people that are racist, racist to color, racist to sex, racist to, to, to gays or transgenders or whatever. That's just racism all around. It's just fucking racism. I don't know if you want to call it homophobic or whatever, but it's just to me called racist. And I don't like either or. So me personally, if this was me, I'd have a restraining order against that motherfucker. He wouldn't be coming around me. And the next time he come around, you will try to harass you. Girlfriend, please. I will be calling 911. Can you please send the motherfucking police over here? Because this bitch ass Tommy is harassing me. Nobody has time for that. What I think you should do, though, you're nearly 18. You're not 18. And you still live at your mother's house. You say you want to get your own apartment when your baby is born. What makes you think that it's so easy? And this is the problem with you young people today. Y'all think that life is so motherfucking easy and that it's just like this and like this and like this and like this. Y'all so quick to say, well, when I get this age, I'm moving out. Or when I do this, I'm moving out. When I have my baby, I'm moving out. First of all, I lived with my mama when I was 18 and I had my baby. And I would have it no other way. Why the fuck would I want to be living on my own with a newborn baby crying all motherfucking night? And I got to learn how to take care of this baby on my own. You need a support system, sweetheart. And your support system is with your mother. Even though y'all allowed this fucking man to clown her, your support system is still with your mother. And it's a lot safer for you to be with your mother versus living on your own and struggling. You're not even 18. You nearly 18. So what makes you think that you can afford to pay fucking rent, electricity, cable, and whatever, and water, and whatever 
other fucking utility bill you got to pay on your own when you got a baby. You're nearly 18. You're not even 18. We just going to call you 18. You're not grown, okay? You think you're getting a good ass job at 18? No, honey, you're not getting a really good job at 18. What 18 year old do you know has a really good job, like in a hospital or a bank or anything like that? None of them that I know of, okay? None of them that I know of. And now you got a new baby, okay? Which means you can't even go back to work just like that. But you got yourself a new baby. Which means now you got to spend time with this baby. And so you got to wake up and pay bills and find a babysitter to take care of this baby and watch this baby while you go to work and pay all these bills. Girl, stay your ass right the fuck at home with your mammy, okay? Stay at home with your mother until you learn some responsibilities. It's safer and it's cheaper. And you got a support system. Stop, Y'all, y'all young people need to stop trying to run out all the time always trying to fucking run off and be grown and don't even know the first fucking thing about being grown y'all don't know the first fucking thing about being motherfucking grown being grown is not having your own fucking apartment that's not what the fuck it is it's a whole lot more to being grown than that it's about being responsible okay and holding up to your own and taking care of your business yeah paying bills is one thing and just because you grown doesn't mean you have to have your own apartment but being grown is accepting your mistakes okay accepting reality and taking care of your business that's what being grown is being grown is handling your business and putting restraining orders on people and realizing that it's okay to be a single parent being grown is taking care of your child alone a single parent and being strong not moving the fuck out to be struggling and your baby can't have shit and then you calling your mama like can i please get some money so you can turn my lights on or help me pay my rent that's not what being grown is so don't think because you just had a baby that it's okay for you to move out you only 18 honey you still a child you in your teens you got a fucking psycho baby father on the loose that needs to be under control and the first thing that you need to do is go get a restraining order against him so he can stay the fuck away from you yeah if he wants to see the child that's what family court is for he could take your ass there but trust and believe if he ain't respecting you or your mama he's not respecting his own fucking mother and then he's talking about oh well you need to have an abortion and he has to say so and you have an abortion and you might not be having it all the shit i wish that motherfucker would so now what you need to do is you need to let the court system know well he's threatening me and i'm scared for my baby's life because it seems like to me that from what he said okay about her having an abortion you know what i'm saying he says um it's his choice to get rid of it so motherfucker how is she going to get rid of it because you can't force her to go to planned parenthood and have an abortion so what are you going to do are you going to give me an abortion are you going to push me down some flight of steps are you going to punch me in my stomach like he's he's a psycho He's a motherfucking psycho. He don't like anybody that's not white. Okay, first of all, I don't know what the problem is with white people sometimes. Not all white people, okay? But those who are racist against all different races, I find that to be very fucking pathetic, okay? And just fucking ignorant. Who the fuck goes around hating on people because of their motherfucking color? Like, this, that shit is so old and played the fuck out. Like, you would think racism and prejudice and all of that shit is old and, and, and played the fuck out. Just like smoking cigarettes is played the fuck out. You know what I'm saying? I'm not hating on anybody that smokes cigarettes because I don't anymore. But I, I, would, I would not think that shit is still trending. Just like race, racial shit is still not, it's not trending. But here it is. It's 2018 and we still got some racist motherfuckers in the world, which is sad and pathetic, but we still have them. And it's sad because you get these white people that feel like, they get in they they get tough in their skin they feel like they can rule the world and then the first time they get fucked up by somebody that ain't their race they like go oh, well they always after us and i hate them like you motherfuckers started the shit okay you motherfuckers started the shit just like tommy he talking about he don't like this person he don't like that person so you think just because the motherfucker is gay that he can't whip your ass let's let's not forget tommy He's still a fucking man. Whether he's gay or not, he's still a man. And he could still whip your ass. Just because he's gay does not mean he won't whip your little white ass. Okay? Point blank period. And that's the problem. They feel like, oh, well, because he's gay, I'm going to kick his ass. You must be out your fucking rabbit ass mind. There are plenty of lesbians that I know who will kick my motherfucking ass. I ain't trying to fucking beat you up because you're a lesbian. Shit. The point is... He is a psychopath and he's miserable in his own skin, okay? And all he's trying to do is control you. And so far, he's been doing a really good job with it because, hmm, let's see. You still allowing him to have a conversation with you. You think that I'm going to allow some fucking derelict nigga to a conversation with me when you talking shit like this to me? You fucking disrespect my mom. I'm not ever speaking to you again. After I handle you, 
there's nothing else to say after that. So you allow this derelict motherfucker to control you. And he is controlling you because you're still allowing him to call you and to speak to you and to come to your home and to scream up in your mama's face and et cetera, et cetera. Like there's no way on God's green earth am I going to allow a derelict because he's a derelict, Tommy's a derelict, to control me, okay? Who has nothing better to do than go around and hate on everybody. One day he's going to need help. And the only people that's going to be around is the people that he don't motherfucking like. And God forbid he asked them for help. And they fucking deny his ass. It would be such a blessing. So, sweetheart, Beth, I hope you get it out of your fucking thick skull. That getting back together with Tommy and trying to make it worth is not a healthy environment for you nor your child. Like, I'm sorry, but where, where would you think that he was going to treat you like a good person after you guys got back together? Like, did you really foresee y'all future to be that so great like oh we're gonna take picnics with the baby he don't even sound like the picnic type okay this nigga sound like a fucking derelict one who runs around and acts like a nazi and is a jackass like a total jack ass yes okay so my 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 advice to you would be to take your ass to court and get a fucking restraining order against him because I wouldn't allow anybody like that up in my life. You ain't even about to be in my surrounding circle, nigga. Don't even walk on my fucking block, okay? I'm going to make it so bad that you don't even want to walk on my block, all right? That's how I would make it. Like, I'm pretty sure you got plenty of receipts that can show the proof of how this motherfucker act. So that way you can get him on a restraining order. But I wouldn't allow him to fucking control me. And I damn sure wouldn't allow him to tell me what the fuck to do and where to run and how to jump. Girl, by talking about she, she should try to make it work. Should she try to make it work with Tommy? I guess if you don't want to live too long, bitch, and you want to have black eyes, then I guess you wouldn't want to make it work. But me, on the other hand, I ain't trying to make nothing work with no fucking derelict. That motherfucker is a derelict. And y'all bitches know that motherfucker is a derelict. And somebody needs to kick his fucking ass. Hopefully it's a black person, a Chinese, an Asian, or a motherfucking gay. I, more or less, I hope it's somebody that's gay. Because she said it more enough times that he don't like people that are gay and all of this. Or I hope it's a black gay man. How about that? Mm -hmm. so, so seriously. Somebody needs to kick his fucking ass. I'm telling y'all. By the time tomorrow comes. I ain't gonna have no lip. I'm gonna have my lip is gonna be so sore. So now we're gonna get on to the next one. Hi April, it's Natalie again. Feel free to use my name. Okay, well I just did. So hmm. it's been three years since you helped me with your great advice. It was so hard to communicate with my mother, but we're finally good. To make a story short. I was the one who wrote you that me and my mom were not getting along. She didn't like my fiance, our jobs, and my looks. I wear a size 12, 14, and she's a little extra small, so she's always has something to say. But finally, we talked after your video response. Thank you and all divas for the support. I got married six months later, and now we have a baby. He's the cutest thing ever. We love him so much, especially my mother, who found a new purpose in life to be the best grandmother. Oh, that's cute. We never have been closer and we talk every day. She accepted my husband and also helps him with his business. So again, thank you so much. We organized the wedding by ourselves as you advised. And the baby really changed our relationship with my mom. Uh Natalie, I didn't I don't remember getting um an invite. Yeah, no. I remember this and I didn't yeah, I didn't get an invite. Hmm. So here comes another issue, and maybe some of our divas could relate. Since I was pregnant until now, the sex game in my relationship is not so great. I breastfeed every two to three hours and the baby sleeps in our room. He often falls asleep in our bed. The baby is cute, but takes all of our energy. It's a little obsession, but he's our first baby. We look at him and we talk about him all the time. So you know there is almost no time for intimacy and sometimes we're just too tired to go to sleep. We're just too tired and we go to sleep. I like to know how can I bring the sex back? We can't spend a night alone or go to the hotel because I breastfeed and he refuses to eat from a bottle. Maybe we could do something nice when my mother takes him for a walk during the daytime. I don't know. How did you manage to keep your love life with your kids in the house or when they were toddlers? Please help. Sometimes I feel like the sex is going for good. Love, Natalie. P.S. I love the videos with your girls, especially the try on hauls. Long family vlogs, and, and I wait all week for every real talk. It's like a TV show. You're my favorite YouTuber since like eight years. 
Well, now, Natalie, you are my favorite as well. Thank you so much. Like, for real. I love to hear stuff like that because I like, I, I, you know, sometimes I feel down in the dumps because I'm like, nobody cares about my YouTube channel. Nobody cares about my videos. So I, I, I feel sometimes a little down about it. So when you guys write me like sweet things, I just smile and I just be all happy and then I forget that I'm down about it. So, you know, and I just be appreciating you guys and because you guys appreciate me. I appreciate you guys. We just appreciate each other. We're just like, oh, cuddly, cuddly. So, Poor Natalie, she's got a baby, she breastfeeds. I'm not really sure how old the baby is, but I'm glad to know that her um, and her fiance got married and they, um, they, they, <clears throat> excuse me, they organized the wedding themselves like I had, uh, like I stated they should do. But I, I, I didn't get an invitation at all. Like, no, nothing. She, I don't recall getting an email saying, what's your address? We're going to invite you. Like, no, I didn't get that. But, you know, I'm glad that her and her mom are friends and they're talking and they have a good relationship. So now here's the issue. She's got a baby and her sex life is down the drain because the baby is sleeping in the, between them in the bed. Girl, let me tell you something. How she how does she want to know how to get the sex back in her life? Let me tell you something, sweetheart. This is just what I'm going to tell you. Okay. Just because you got a baby does not mean that you got to stop the sex game. You don't have to have sex at night just because it's night and it's dark. A lot of people fail to realize that you can have sex whenever you fucking want to in the daytime, in the afternoon time, in the nighttime. It does not matter, okay? And it seems like you guys are waiting until the evening to have sex because you guys are ready to go to sleep. Now, I'm not sure if your husband is working from home, but I do recall you saying your mom helps him with his business, which is great. But I think that, you know what I'm saying? Stop waiting until the wee hours of the night when it gets dark, when it's time to go to bed to have sex. You don't have to go to bed to have sex. You don't have to have sex to go to bed. You can creep off and have quickie. You know what I mean? Send him some sweet sexting. What do you call it? Sexting. Start sexting your husband. Oh God, it's such a weird word to say. Sexting. You know what I'm saying? Start sexting him. You know, like turn him on. Say sweet things to him, sexy things to him during text messages during the daytime. He'll probably come looking for you if you're in the same household with him, in the same house with him during the day. You know, you can sneak off while he's having, you know, a moment, a, a baby's napping. Baby takes naps, girl. You know, find a, a minute. It only You don't need all day long to have sex, though it would be nice. You know what I'm saying? Who don't want to have sex all day? Uh, but... You don't gotta wait till nighttime to have sex, you know. Since some people find it weird to have sex during the daytime, but not a bitch like me, okay. I'm just saying, vacation was real nice, okay. My vacation was real motherfucking nice. I wasn't waiting till the nighttime to have sex. I tell you that, but that's TMI. That's neither here nor there. However, um, what did I used to do with my kids? Um, and they were toddlers. Okay, so let me tell you what we used to do. Well, Mumsy seemed like she was the one that was always like a cock blocker, okay? She was always blocking, always fucking blocking. And it, it's, it's a shame, but we would have to wait for her to go to bed. Out of all five, we'd always have to wait for her to go to sleep. Like literally go to sleep, like fall asleep, like, <clears throat> okay? Well, my other kids just go to bed and we would go in the room. But with her, she always blocking something. So it wouldn't be till like one o'clock in the morning and we was having sex. And, you know, when we started and we was both tired, but we still made time for that shit, you know? Um, and it wasn't like no five minute things either. But anyway, um, we would just have to wait for her to go to bed and she was a toddler. But what you need to do, first of all, is the first thing you need to do is you said the baby is cute and he's sleeping in between y'all. Listen, the ba all babies are fucking cute, girl. All motherfucking babies are cute. However, we we got to break ourselves out of the habit of letting them sleep in the bed with us all the time because the bed is made for you and your husband. And though you two have a baby together, y'all are good parents, y'all are taking care of this baby. Like I just said to the young lady, Paris, you got to find time for yourselves, okay? It's husband and wife time. Okay. You can't, you, you can, you can allow the baby to take up some of your time. Yes. But you also got to give some of your time to one another. Now, granted, I'm just saying you can't have the baby in the bed with you all the time. 
first of all, it's not safe to have the baby in the bed between you and your husband. And that's just a known fact. A lot of babies get smothered to death like that or get hurt in the bed between their parents. And though you feel like you're not going to roll over on the baby or you're not going to hurt the baby while you're sleeping, you never know what can happen. So in reality, it's really not safe for you to have your baby in the bed with you. Also, number two is you're building up a very bad habit to where you're not going to get that little baby out of the bed with you. And then you're going to have him sleeping in the bed with you when he's two and three and you really ain't going to get no dick. OK, that's number two. All right. Three, you got this baby in the bed and he's like a separation, a wedge between you and your husband. You are separating yourselves by having this baby in the bed. You guys are supposed to be like this. OK, husband and wife, a unity close. Now we got this baby. We can have this baby on the crib in the same room. You can have the baby in the same room with you in its own little bed. OK, right there. All right. Right there. So you still are safe. You're still close to the baby. If you feel like you don't want the baby in another room, I understand that. However, you don't need to have the baby in the middle of you and your husband. It's unsafe. And then also it's a bad habit. And hey. Unsafe and bad habit is not cool, but also it's building a wedge in between you and your husband's relationship, okay? Now, if you had this baby in its own little bed, in his own little bed, in your room, you and your husband would be closer to one another, right? Yeah, because I'm you're not going to be so close. You got the baby right here separating you guys, like a pillow in the middle of you guys. I would put a pillow in between me and my husband when we would argue, okay? Because I didn't want him to touch me. Now, you got this baby in the middle of you guys. This is a little wedge in between you. He's a cute little wedge at that. He's a cute little divider, but he's there. And where he needs to be is on the other side of you in his own little bed where it's safe for him and where he's getting used to sleeping in his own little bed. Because once you put them in your bed, they are very hard to get out of your bed. Take it from me. I know this very well because I have one. Mumsy, who sleeps in my bed. I don't like to be alone, and neither does she. She don't want to be in her room with her sister. So it's very hard. Now, like I was saying, putting the baby in his own little bed allows you and your husband to be a lot closer because your husband is definitely going to scoot in and you're going to scoot in. You guys ain't going to be laying on the edges. Why would you guys want to lay on the edges of the bed? You got all this space in between you guys. So y'all going to move in. And whether it's 12 o'clock at night or 1130, you're going to be so close to him and he's going to be so close to you. And it doesn't matter how tired he is and how tired you are. Yeah, you guys may drift off and go to sleep. But bitch, y'all going to wake up in the middle of the night. He's going to wake up in the middle of the night. He's going to get to touching you and y'all going to get to getting it on. OK, that's how it fucking works all the time. Stop putting this little cutie pie in between you guys. OK. He is building a fucking wall in between you guys. And it's the cutest fucking wall ever. I get it. But you're you're starting the baby off with bad habits, okay? And he's sleeping with you. And also, it's like I said, it's unsafe. Now, if you want to wait till your mother goes for a walk with the baby and have sex, girl, go ahead and get yours, all right? But don't just run in there and be like, let's just do it and start ripping your clothes off because that's not very, like, you know, sexy and it doesn't really get you in the mood like that. What I would do... All right. Send him some sexy messages like, hey, what you doing, dad? You know, you, you ask him, how's it going? How Whatever you can think of that's sexy to you. Say things that he gets him aroused. Do that in a text message. He could be sitting right next to you or on the other side of the room. Text it to him because they like to read that shit over and over. You saying it may make him feel uncomfortable. And it also may make you feel a little embarrassed and shy. So you text it because then uh, you see him. He's like, oh, word. Mm. And he's looking over at you. So you gotta, you can't wait for him to always, you know, initiate. Build it up. Build it up, girl. Build it up with some text messages. I'm telling you, that shit work all the time. But the one thing you need to do is get that baby out the bed and put it in its own bed. That's the number one thing. And if your mama's taking the baby for a walk, girl, get you some. Get you some. But start off with some, like, you know, some texty, some sexy texts. I'm just saying, you know. It all begins. Mumsy is going off on Wilson. Um, but it all begins with, you know, some 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 type of conversation. 
you guys have to get the baby out the bed. That's number one. You ain't going to have a sex life if you got the baby in the bed with you. Your sex life is definitely going to go to shit. How y'all going to hump with the baby right there in the middle? And then if you take the baby out the bed and put it to his own bed, it might wake up. He might wake up. So my guess to you would be, hmm, I'll put that baby right there over there. Now, I, I get it. You say you breastfeed every two to three hours. I get that. All right. Your baby must be you you your baby must be a little a brand new baby. You know what I'm saying? He must be a couple of weeks old, a couple of months old, because every two to three hours is a lot. But I used to breastfeed too. Um I breastfed four of my children out of five. And you do breastfeed a little bit more. However, what you should start doing, and I'm not really sure how old he is, but you gotta start weaning him onto the bottle as well. And I know like we, I loved the bonding thing with my child when I breastfed, but you have to keep an account. Like, even though you love the bonding thing, try to get him used to drinking from the bottle because you may have to run out somewhere and as, as an emergency and you can't take your son with you and your mother has to watch him. It's going to be really hard for the baby and it's not going to be fair to the baby as well if he doesn't have anything to drink because he doesn't like to drink from a bottle. We all don't like something. My kids, my 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 son Wuzzle, he didn't like to drink from the bottle neither. He did not like to drink from the bottle. And I had no choice but to try to teach him because you ain't going to be having my boob in your mouth all the time. You know, I have things to do. So even though you can still give the baby the breast milk, you still need to try to like get him used to drinking on bottles as well. My grandson Tinky was like that also. You have to get him used to drinking on bottles because like I said, you never know. You may have to go somewhere as an emergency and you can't take the baby with you. What are you going to do? Leave him with your mother and he doesn't have anything to eat? You have to get him used to drinking from the bottle. Everybody doesn't like something. And the reason why he doesn't like the bottle is because it does not feel like your nipple. It doesn't feel like your areola. And that's what the problem is with babies that are breastfed. That's not a problem, but that's the issue. The, the, the nipple is a little bit harder. What I had to do, and this is what I had to do. I probably went and tried out probably like six different nipples before I found the perfect one that Wuzzle liked for to use as a bottle i had to go through six different nipples for the bottles just to find the one that he would use and that's what you have to do it's all about the nipple and that's the reason why the babies don't like it and also the fact that when you're breastfeeding the baby's head is here so his face is kind of like smushed into your boob and you have that areola that's around his little face right here what i used was those playtex bottles and they're a little bit wider you know, and then they have the nipple that looks more like a nipple. If you haven't tried those, give those a try. They have the silicone ones and then they have like, like the rubber ones. And that's what I use for a majority of my kids. Um, they don't even have to be by Playtex. Dr. Brown makes them. Um, Av Avance makes them. There's all different brands now that make them, but I've used those. Um, and they have all different type of nipples too. They don't just have the regular nipples. They have some that are curved. So I've used those, and it has a lot to do with they. They need to feel the touch right here on their faces. So I would try that out. But I think like you know, it's great that you're a parent and you guys love your baby and you guys talk about the baby constantly. But you guys need to talk about one another also. But you also have to do things for yourself, and also you have to do things for the baby. You know what I'm saying? Because it's not fair to the baby if you're putting the baby in the bed all the time and then you, all of a sudden you don't want the baby to sleep there and the baby's like whoa 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 i'm comfortable here this is my comfort zone whoa 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 whoa, whoa. now you want me to put me in here that's not fair to him that's like you take kicking me out of my bed and making me sleep downstairs on the sofa whoa 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 that's taking me out of my element same thing with the baby so it's not fair to him you have to allow him to sleep in his own bed okay and also for the breastfeeding we love the bond of breastfeeding but you have to get him used to drinking it out of a bottle also because it's not fair to him. If you have to leave and go somewhere and he don't have the titty, he's going to cry his little eyes out. So you have to get him used to it. He's not going to like it in the beginning. No, they're going to spit it out and they're going to keep pushing it out. That's what they do. I've been through this for many a time. But you have to be very consistent with it. But the first thing is to keep that baby off the bed because it's not safe and get to know one another again. You know what I'm saying? Once that baby is out of the bed, you guys got some cuddling time to do because y'all going to be smack dead closer to each other. And if somebody going to want to fill up on somebody, your husband going to probably be rubbing up on you talking about, oh, what was that text message you was talking about? He going to be dead ass tired. He going to be talking about what was that text message you was talking about? Okay. 
So, Natalie, think about that and get it together. My husband is calling. I love you guys. Stay diva and diva delicious. Make sure you rate, comment, subscribe, thumbs this video up, and I'll see you guys on another side. Yes, that's my ringtone.